هاتوا 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 اقفل كل الطرق بسرعه ماشي اسمع الكلام عجل سيدي عجل السلام عليكم يا شيخ السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام تعال تفضل لقدام Coffee? Yeah, thank you. How have you liked your dear stay? What I've seen, I like. Got done. Hmm. Please to explain why I should agree to interview with pro Zionist American media. Because I think Hezbollah is trying to broaden into a political party right now. So you care about what you thought of in America. And in America, at this moment in time, Hezbollah does not have a face. That's why. Perhaps you prove journalism objectivity, and I see the questions first. Then I decide if I grant the interview. No, we don't do that. You've seen 60 Minutes and Mike Wallace, so you know our reputation for integrity and objectivity. You also know we are the highest rated most respected TV magazine news show in America. So, Mr. Wallace, should he get on a plane or not? Tell him I will see him day after tomorrow. That's good, that works. Uh, you know, I want to ask you something. I know it sounds odd, but... Hello? Sheik? Hello? Sheik? Norman! What? What? Take your blindfold off. Welcome to the world. Look, we're in all over the place. Anywhere we shoot here, it's going to be portable jennies and uh, we'll run cable. What's new? This offer gave me a start today. Yeah? What for? For reading. 
great. Lorry for cartoons, isn't it? Slow down, slow down, slow down. Eat deep, eat deep. Slow down, honey. slow down. Slow down. Here we go. Deep breaths, deep breaths. He's playing with the Buddha. <laughs> Who's Dusty, sweetheart? He's Dusty, you breathe him in. Okay? So what's happening to, look at me, what's happening to you now is cells called mast cells. I told your lungs, don't breathe any more of that dust in. The airways in your lungs are like branches. When the branches close up, you get an asthmatic attack. And we give you medicine, and you get better. Uh-huh. Okay? You're better already, aren't you? Can I go to dance tomorrow? I, I'm better. If you are, then I'll take Barbara to soccer and take you to dance after. I can take her. Don't you have to be at the office? Is there any more rice? Yes, it's on the stove. Do you want more rice? Maybe later. How about you? I'll take some. Mr. Rice? Janine's house. I'm sorry, darling. Have you seen my coffee mug? Try the car. <sighs> uh, what are those boxes? I'm going to the store. You need anything? What do you need at the store? Soy sauce. Right now? That's my stuff from the office. Well, why'd you take your stuff from the office? I didn't want to leave it there. I don't understand. I got fired this morning. Where else am I going to take it? Why? Who said? Thomas Sandifer. What are we supposed to do? What about our medical coverage? What about our health? What about our car payments? Our payments on this house? As a severance agreement includes cash payouts all the time, continuing medical coverage. Sure you don't need anything? No, thank you. to receive you as my guest, Mr. Wallace. Thank you for having us. I think I've got a problem with the Jenny. We've got to go outside. Norman. Norman. 
He says uh, you must not sit so close. What? I can't conduct an interview from back there. You must move back your chair. Will you tell him that when I conduct an interview, I sit anywhere I damn please? There is no interview. You! Hey, what? I'm talking to you. Who the hell do you think I am? A 78 year old assassin? Do you think I'm going to karate him to death with this notepad? Are you interpreting what I'm saying? Yes. We're there. Good. Well, ask him if Arabic is his second language. Hold it. 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 Hold if you just would just turn your chair a little bit to face Mr. Wallace. Okay. Okay. Are you ready or do you want to keep fucking around and warm up some more? No. I've got my heart started. Okay. All right, Todd. Give me the uh, three button on mic, please. Okay, we are rolling. Okay, Mike. Sheikh Fadlala, thank you so much for seeing us. Are you a terrorist? Mr. Wallace, I am a servant of God. A servant of God? Really? Americans believe that you, as an Islamic fundamentalist, that you are a leader who contributed to the bombing? of the U.S. Embassy. Now, everybody thinks Canadian Mounties ride horses and rescue ladies from rapids. Mike, they backed locals in Oka in a fight with Mohawks over building a golf course on their burial site. They beat up protesters at Kanasaki. Did you hear that? No. Oh, someone took a poll? Are all things Canadian boring? It's Stuart. He's in Mexico City. Oh, let me play that. Yes, yeah, Stuart. What do you think? Hey, Dad. Will we go on camera and talk about the Mexico City branch? Sure. Hey, Jake. Whose money are they long? No um, classes this morning? Um, I don't have to be there till 10.30. Yeah. Hey, Mom. Hello. Yes, we are. Hello? Will independent sources corroborate? Yeah. Dad, you got a box Let me out see here. <laughs> I, no, no, because I got to know where you're Hang going on. at all Hang times. On. I can't. I've got to fly to Boston tomorrow. 2 p.m. Great. Bye-bye. Mission propensity. Do you understand any of this? No. <laughs> Uh, this looks like a table of temperatures. Who is this from? It's anonymous. References to PM. Yeah. It's got to be Philip Morris, huh? I have to take a shower. Hi, this is Doug Oliver. Oh, hi, Doug. Just say uh, hello. I'm doing a story on fire safety of people burning up from falling asleep smoking. I receive a shitload of scientific papers from inside Philip Morris. Anonymous. You or anybody in FDA know someone who can translate this stuff in English for me? Uh, yeah. Uh, 
Mr. Wygant, please? Who's calling for Daddy, Mom? Oh, all right. Thank you, Bob. Who's calling? Uh, my name is Lowell Bergman. I'm Sir Bergman. No, Bergman. B-E-R-G-M-A-N. I'm a producer with 60 Minutes. 60 Minutes? Yeah. 60 Minutes, a television show? Yes. He doesn't want to talk to you. How does he know he doesn't want to talk to me? He doesn't know what I'm calling him about. He doesn't care to know. If you'd like to leave a message or send a fax, start now. Uh, this is Lowell Bergman with 60 Minutes, and I'm doing a story on fire safety in cigarettes. I have scientific documents from a tobacco company, and I could use your help as a consultant explaining these documents to me. Now, my number is area code 510-555-0199. I'll be there at this number in 10 minutes. If you're curious to meet me, I'm going to be in the lobby of the Seal Bach Hotel in Louisville, reading the New York Times tomorrow at 5 o'clock.
Have you always lived in Louisville? Mr. Bergman, what did you want me to consult about? Who's that? That's room service. They usually knock first. Come on in. Over here, please. How do you like your coffee? Black? Black. Black. Look, I really don't have uh, that much time. <clears throat> Is there anything you want to know about me, Mr. Wygan? Like what? Your sign? I know what I have to know. Just so I know you know. When I talk to people in confidence, it stays that way. How did a radical journalist from Ramparts magazine end up at CBS? I still do the tough stories. 60 Minutes reaches a lot of people. Let me see the documents. This is a um, fire safety product study for Philip Morris. Burn rates, ignition propensity, things of this nature. I could very easily explain this to you in layman's terms because it's from another company. But that's as far as I go. As far as you go where? This issue is a drop in the bucket. I can talk to you about what's in here, but I, I can't talk to you about anything else. signed a confidentiality agreement. I honor agreements. Doesn't CBS have confidentiality agreements, Mr. Bergman? Between journalists and management, yes, I believe they do. But I don't take that seriously. Where do you work? Did work. Did work. How much would I get paid? That you have to discuss with uh, CBS Business Affairs. But for something like this, I would say anywhere between 10, 12,000. Should I just take the documents now? If you want to do it. I've worked as a uh, head of research and development for Brown and Williamson Tobacco Company. I was a corporate vice president. Mr. Burden. President Assad of Syria said that difficult obstacles remain, but that his country, quote, looks forward to a great long peace with Israel. It's Peabody, Mike. When you're dead and buried, Hezbollah is the one you're going to remember. He's in barracks lying when he's talking shit. Are you eating with us? Yeah. We'll bring a tie so they left some in front of them. <laughs> Main Justice investigating a major New York bank laundering narco dollars out of their Mexico City branch. You want it for the evening news? What about you? You got a call already? I'm going to do a follow-up. Okay. Catch you later. Debbie, how are you? I want you to get legal on a corporate confidentiality agreement. It's boundaries of their constraint. Kentucky state law about 
want you to drop everything. Okay. Don't let me change. You got the change? I'm here. Sorry, I'm accepting an award from the Retinitis Pigmentosa Foundation. It's gonna kill the rest of my day. Yeah. So, you had a chance to play golf? Jeff's a premier golfer. What are you, two handicapped? So. And he gets out there and he has five strokes on us. He has more concentration than anybody I've ever met. It's spooky how he can concentrate. I'd rather play than talk about it. What did you want to see me about? I don't like being back here. Well, Jeffrey says exactly what's on his mind. Most people consider what they're saying, social skills. Jeffrey just charges right ahead. Now, I know you understood the nature of the confidentiality portion of your severance agreement with Brown and Williamson, Jeff. Chapter and verse. Yeah, I know you do. You know, I came up through sales. One of the reasons I was a great salesman was I never made a promise I couldn't keep. I knew that if I ever broke my promise, I'd suffer the consequence. Is that a threat? We worked together for what was it? Three years. Now, the work we did here is confidential, not for public scrutiny, any more than our one's family matters. You're threatening my family now, too? <laughs> now, don't be paranoid, Jeff. About the direction of research here, we may have had our differences of opinion. Research? You declare as a badge of honor you don't even know what makes water boil. Well, that's why we are hired scientists. Okay. I don't believe you can maintain corporate integrity without confidentiality agreements. I was paid well for my work. The health and welfare benefits are good. The severance package is fair. I have no intention of violating my confidentiality agreement and disclosing that which I said I wouldn't. Well, I appreciate all that, Jeff. But upon reflection, we've decided to expand our zone of comfort with you. So we've drafted a supplement to your agreement. It broadly defines and expands in more detail what is confidential. Nobody will be able to say, well, hell's bells, Margaret. I didn't know that was a secret. We're very serious about protecting our interests. We'd like you to sign it. And if I don't? If we arrive at the conclusion that you're acting in bad faith, we would terminate right now payouts under your severance package, you and your family's medical benefits, and initiate litigation against you, Mr. Wygand. Dr. Wygand. Dr. Wygand. After you've examined the document, you'll see it's in your own best interest, and you'll sign it. So what you're saying is it isn't enough that you fired me for no good reason. Now you question my integrity. On top of the humiliation of being fired, you threaten me. You threaten my family. It never crossed my mind not to honor my agreement. I will tell you, Mr. Sandifer, and Brown and Williamson too, fuck me. Well, fuck you. I'm not sure he got the message. Oh, I think he did. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. 
kill me. Yeah. You fucked me. Who's this? Protect your sources. You screwed me. You sold me out. What are you talking about? Where are you? Fuck you two. Stay away from me! Jeffrey! You forgot to launch it! This is Ligand! Something quick, come on. How do you do? I'm Lowell Bergman. You spoke on the phone. Come here, I want to talk to you. Good, I want to talk to you. This is I my house. Not In front of my wife, you, my kids. I did not give you up to anyone. I'm what business to, do we have? To straighten something out with you. Right here, right now. You didn't mention my name. You haven't talked to anybody about me. Why are Brown and Williamson? No, I spoke How the hell do I know about Brown and Williamson? It happened just after I talked to you. I don't know. What I don't do you mean? like coincidence. Well, I don't like paranoid accusations. I'm a journalist. Think. Use your head. How do I operate as a journalist? By screwing the people who could provide me with information before they provided me with it. You came all the way down here to tell me that? No, I did not. Big tobacco is a big story. And you got something important to say, I can tell. But yes, I did. I came all the way down here to tell you. Story, no story. Fuck your story. 
I don't burn people. I would be like, take a girl to school. daughter and I'm unemployed so I have to protect my medical coverage so I left them a message this morning their expanded confidentiality agreement I will sign it they're afraid of you aren't they they should be well talk to me outside the zone of your agreement like what like, uh, where'd you work before Brown and Williamson? Johnson and Johnson. Union Carbide in Japan. I was the general manager and director of new products. I speak Japanese. And I was a director of corporate development at Pfizer. All health-related. What else? Outside the zone. I don't know. You think the Knicks are going to make it to the semifinals? Give me an example. Okay, for example, um, James Burke, CEO of Johnson & Johnson. Yeah. When he found out that some lunatic had put uh, poison in Tylenol bottles, yeah. he didn't argue with the FDA. He didn't even wait for the FDA to tell him. He just pulled Tylenol off every shelf, every store, right across America, instantly. <laughs> and then he developed a safety cap. Because look, as a CEO, he's sure, he's gotta be a great businessman, right? But he's also a man of science. So he's not going to allow his company to put on a shelf a, a product that might hurt people. Not like the Seven Dwarfs. Seven Dwarfs? Seven CEOs of Big Tobacco. I got in front of Congress that time. It was on oh, television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Swore under oath that they know nothing about addiction disease. Yeah. On C SPAN, yeah. yeah. Okay. So here you are. You, 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 you go to work uh, for tobacco. You come from corporate cultures where research. Really, creative thinking, these are core values. You go to tobacco. Tobacco is a sales culture, market and sell enormous volume, go to a lot of golf tournaments, the hell with everything else. I mean, what are you doing? Why are you working for tobacco in the first place? I can't talk about it. <laughs> the work I was supposed to do might, might have had some positive effect. I don't know. It could have been beneficial. Mostly, I got paid a lot. I took the money. My wife was happy. My kids have good medical, good schools, got a great house. I mean, what the hell is wrong with that? Nothing's wrong with that. That's it. You're making money. You're providing for your family. What could be wrong with that? I always thought of myself as a man of science. That's what's wrong with it. Then uh, you're in a state of conflict, Jeff. Because look, here's how it lays out. If you got vital insider stuff, the American people for their welfare really do need to know, and you feel impelled to disclose it and violate your agreement in doing so, that's one thing. On the other hand, if you want to honor this agreement, then uh, that's simple. You do so. You say nothing, you do nothing. There's only one guy who can figure that out for you, and that's you, all by yourself. I'm gonna go pick up the girls, I only had half a day. I've heard virtually all of you touch on it. Yuck your nose. 
you believe nicotine is not addictive? Congressman, cigarettes and nicotine clearly do not meet the classic definitions of addiction. There is no intoxication. We'll, we'll take that as a no, and again, time is short. <laughs> I think each of you believe nicotine is not addictive. We just would like to have this for the record. I believe that nicotine is not addictive. And I do believe that nicotine. He referred to this, the seven dwarfs. What seven dwarfs? The seven CEO of Big Tobacco referred to this, said they should be afraid of him. I assume afraid of what he could reveal. Now, you tell me, what does this guy have to say that threatens these people? Well, it isn't cigarettes are bad for you. Hardly new news? <laughs> no shit. <laughs> What's this? What that is, is tobacco's standard defense. It's the we don't know litany. Addiction? We believe not. Disease? We don't know. We take a bunch of leaves, we roll them together, you smoke them. After that, you're on your own. We don't know. So, that tells me nothing. Besides, you never get what he's got. Why not? Because of this guy's confidentiality agreement, he's never going to be able to talk to you. That's not good enough. This guy is the top scientist in the number three tobacco company in America. He's a corporate officer. You never get whistleblowers from Fortune 500 companies. This guy is the ultimate insider. He's got something to say. He wants to say it. I want it on 60 Minutes. doesn't matter what well, he am, wants. Am I missing something? What here? do you mean, Mike? I mean, he's got a <clears throat> corporate secrecy agreement. <laughs> Give me a break. Well, this is a public health issue, like an unsafe airframe on a passenger jet or some company dumping cyanide into the East River. The issues like that. He can talk, we can air it. They've got no right to hide behind a, a corporate agreement. Pass the notes. They don't need the right. They got the money. The unlimited checkbook. That's how big tobacco wins every time on everything. They spend you to death. Six hundred million a year in outside legal. Chadburn Park, uh, Ken Starr's firm, Kirkland and Ellis. Listen, GM and Ford, they get nailed after 11 or 12 pickups blow up, right? These clowns have never, I mean ever. Not even once. Not even with hundreds of thousands dying each year from an illness related to their product have ever lost a personal injury lawsuit. On this case, they'll issue gag orders, sue for breach, anticipatory breach, and join him, you, us, his pet dog, the dog's veterinarian, tie him up in litigation for 10 or 15 years. I'm telling you, they bat a thousand every time. He knows that. That's why he's not going to talk to you. Okay, let's look through the looking glass the other way. What do you mean? We got a guy who wants to talk, but he's constrained. What if he were compelled to talk? Oh, torture. Great rating. <laughs> what do you mean compelled? I mean uh, compelled by a uh, Justice Department, state courts, via witness. That would cut through any confidentiality agreement, wouldn't it? Yeah. What, what does that do? What do you mean, what does it do? What I mean is, like, how does it cut through the confidentiality agreement? Because he has to uh, reveal it in the court of law. It's on record. It's out. It's no secret anymore. So how can they restrain his speech or retaliate? It's out in the world. Well, if you could engineer it into the court record, you might have something. I mean, they, they would have a hell of a time trying to restrain his speech then, wouldn't they? Yeah, but what venue? And where does he get... I mean, does he have killer attorneys? I don't think he's got any attorneys. He's going to need attorneys who aren't afraid of risking years of litigation and millions of dollars of their own dough in legal costs. What do you say, Mike? What do you think? Even if he gets the defense team, will he go for it? The offer of a qualified Dr. Wigand. <clears throat> I'm trying to start a new career. I believe I could be a good teacher. Let me give it some thought. And not a lot of companies in the healthcare field hire ex tobacco scientists.
That's it. Babies were born. Debbie took her first steps right there on in the craft. I didn't plan on this. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, come on. <laughs> we can make this work for us, okay? It's just it's not, it's just, it's a smaller scale. Simpler, easier, more time. More time together, more time with the kids, more time for us, okay? It's just, you imagine me coming home from some job, feeling good at the end of the day. This is gonna be better. This is gonna be better. Daddy. Did you see somebody or did you hear them? I heard them. Where? In the backyard. some uh, paper and draw me a picture, okay? What are you gonna draw me, baby? An animal? Something like that? You just stay down here until Daddy gets back, all right, Robert? You stay down here.
just a raccoon, baby. Nothing. They're nocturnal, you know what that means? That means if they only come out at night time. Okay. Sure. You know, I was thinking of calling you tomorrow anyway. Uh, how's your... Kids, uh, handling the new house. Good. Have you got kids? We have a couple. One's hers, one's mine. Everybody uses a different name. Modern marriage. Uh, how's Leanne? Uh, she, she's okay. Uh, hold on a minute. Somebody may be following me. I, I don't know. They, they, they came on the property. What do you mean, followed you? Did you call the police? I, I, I don't want to be paranoid. I mean, maybe it's a game, some kind of mind game. Well, what do you really think, though? I don't know what the fuck I really think, you know? Are they doing it? Is some crank doing it? Are they doing it to make me feel paranoid? Are they doing it for real? I don't give a shit what I think. I don't know. I don't you fucking know. Jeffrey, describe for me in detail what happened. Well,. No, look, I mean, uh, that, 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 was, that was a footprint. Forget it, you know. It's probably not important at all. You know, I, I got a job now. I'm, I'm teaching, uh, teaching high school Japanese and chemistry. Uh, so, uh, what were you calling about? You called me. No, you said you were going to call me tomorrow, so, uh, what about? Oh, yes, 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 I did. I wanted to talk to you. I wanted to hook up with you. Talk to you about what we were talking about in your car. Makes you feel good? Putting what you know to use? How'd you know that, Mom? It's obvious, isn't it? Hello? Yeah. yeah. Look, um... <laughs> thanks for talking. I, uh, I'm sorry I woke you up. It's okay. this do not call here do not so reja she shall not to tempura teshu ko futatsu hai kashikomari mashita nama ga kita shimo to tempura teshu ko futatsu desu ne sore to osake mo ippon said you did graduate work at Wisconsin, then went to uh, UC La Jolla with Professor Herbert Marcus. Marcuse, yeah. He was my mentor. He had a major influence on the new left in the late 60s, and on me personally. Next to your father? My father? What the hell's that got to do with my father? I, uh... <clears throat> Is that why you became a journalist? Then you get to ask all the questions? Are you charged by the hour? My father was a <clears throat> mechanical engineer. Most ingenious man I ever knew. Well, my father left us when I was five years old. He was not the most ingenious man I ever knew. Let's get back to uh, Brown and Williamson. If you decide to go on 60 Minutes, I got to know everything about why you were fired. Why? They're going to dig up stuff from your past. They're going to throw it at you. I got to know what they're going to throw. You understand? I drink a couple occasions more than I should have. Mm -hmm. I was cited for shoplifting once, but it was a mistake. Pushed Leanne one time, and we were both stressed out because of the pressure. She went to her mother's. <clears throat> I got uh, fired because uh, 
When I get angry, I have difficulty censoring myself, and I don't like to be pushed around. I'm not pushing you around. I'm asking you questions. I'm just a commodity to you, aren't I? That could be anything, right? Anything worth putting on between commercials. To a network, probably we're all commodities. To me, you're not a commodity. What you are is important. You go public and 30 million people hear what you gotta say, nothing, I mean nothing, will ever be the same again. You believe that? No. You should. Because when you're done, a judgment is gonna go down in a court of public opinion, my friend. And that's the power you have. You believe that? I believe that? Yes, I believe You believe that because you get information out to people, something happens? Yes. Maybe that's just what you've been telling yourself all these years to justify having a good job. Having status. Or maybe for the audience it's just voyeurism, something to do on a Sunday night. And maybe it won't change a fucking thing. And people like myself and my family are left hung out to dry, used up, broke, alone. Are you talking to me or did somebody else just walk in here? I never I don't saw any of that. Understand. No, no, exactly. Don't evade a choice you gotta make by questioning my reputation or 60 minutes with this cheap skepticism. I have to put my family's welfare on the line here, my friend. And what are you putting up? You're putting up words. Words. While you've been dicking around some fucking company golf tournaments, I've been out in the world giving my word and backing it up with action. Now, are you going to go and do this thing or not? I said I'd call the kids before they went to bed. On this, sir. Stringer was supposed to be shooting B-roll on street cops in New Orleans. What's with all the horses? Hammer guy's got a thing about mounted police. Don't any of these guys... Riding cars? Walk? How long? Did he stay? What was he saying? Yeah, hello. Yes, I'm trying to reach Mr. Richard Scruggs. This is Richard Scruggs. Oh, this can you hold on one second, please? All right. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, let me... oh, hello, I'm Lowell Bergman. Hold on. Mobile approach. This is Lear, November 643. Over. Request a flight level of 220 on a heading of 284 degrees. Over. Mr. Bergman? Yes, I'm right here. Could you call me back on a hard line? All right. Area code 212 I'll call you then. What do we do with that? I don't know. You filed a lawsuit against tobacco on behalf of the state of Mississippi, did you not? That's right. Well, I'm working with someone now who's the former head of research at Brown and Williamson, former corporate officer there. What's your interest in this, Mr. Bergman? Well, he may tape an interview with us, and we believe if his testimony showed up in a court record first, it would free him up from his confidentiality agreement and give him some protection. It could work. If it's public record, it's public record. Yeah, and he's going to need legal representation. Well, he sure as hell will. <laughs> Has he decided to go public? Because let me tell you, we've been doing this for three years now, uh, and we've worked with a lot of uh, corporate cases involving whistleblowers. So we know Big Tobacco will do everything in their power to stop him. So is your man truly committed? Well, actually, no. Well, he's on the fence. That's the point. Well, we'd certainly be interested in making his acquaintance. But without knowing what he's going to do... Well, would you want him to call you, or you want to call him? How do you want to do it? It would be better if he called us. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay, thank you. Shit. Oh, we need cops on the streets. We don't need them on horses. I don't know what he was thinking. Oh, for God's sake. What, right. this guy got a horse fetish? All right, all right. Get me, uh, get me to uh, New Orleans at 7. Shoot the fucking thing myself! Good. 
I'm cooking pasta primavera. Dispatch received a call of shots fired in the area and uniforms arrived on the scene and found this white male subject uh, shot to death. It was gang related? There's no indication as far as uh, a tag or uh, an advertisement. Yeah. The terrorizing us. Death threats, my family, my kids. Oh, what are you talking about? Someone put a bullet in my mailbox. Jeff, call the FBI. Right away. They do this with impunity. Jeff. They get to go home at night. What does it cost these people to do this to us? Nothing. My girls are crying. So fuck them. I want a tape. I'm done. I heard you. I got to arrange for legal defense first. I got to get you to testify in court. Get it on public record. Then hold it off the air until you got that. But I want to go to New York, and I want to go on the record. Right now. Good. But Jeff. I'll call them, Law. Did you handle the round, Mr. Wagon? Uh, yes, I'm afraid I did. We won't be able to lift usable prints. Do you own a gun, Mr. Wagon? A gun, yes. What caliber is your gun? What caliber is my gun? Yes, sir. What caliber is your gun? What does that have to do with the price of tea in China? You think I put the bullet in the mailbox myself? If we could take a look, Mr. Wagon. Why do you keep this gun? I don't think it's unconstitutional yet to own a gun. I'm a target shooter. That bullet was for a 38 caliber. Do you own a 38? Yes, I do. A 38 Target Master, my gun safe downstairs, a 45 Gold Cup, a 22 Target Pistol. So what? Do you have a history of emotional problems, Mr. Wagon? Yes. Yes, I do. Yes. I get uh, extremely emotional when assholes put bullets in my mailbox. I, I didn't tell you that so you could just pick it up and take it away. Jeffrey! What's going on? I told him you had an email death threat that said if you didn't shut the F up, they were going to kill you. You can't take that. It's personal property. I'll go in there, my personal cards, bonds, brothers, my brother, my will. I can do that. Every Mr. Wagon, we need to take a look at your gun safe, Mr. Wagon.
I'm telling you, your agents in that office are acting improperly. Now, who are they trying to protect? Let me tell you something, Lo. Look, look, look. You're talking about two agents in a regional office in Louisville. I got the goddamn Unabomber threatening to blow up LAX. I gotta move. I gotta move 45 agents from all over the country into LA. All right. When I get a chance, I'll give it a look. You better take a good look because I'm getting two things: pissed off and curious. Now, any of these guys been uh, offered jobs in corporate security after they retire? Either one of those guys got ex-agent pals already in those jobs. Like, for instance, their ex-supervisor, who's already at Brown and Williamson, as we fucking speak. I'll give it a look. You're getting my drift. I'll give it a look. So is everything okay? How are the rooms, comfortable? Yes, very. You know, I enjoy your work so much. When you're talking to somebody, I always feel like I'm right there. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. <laughs> you think we could talk about the taping, tomorrow's taping, just so we can get it out of the way and order? Yeah, well, questions will go toward uh, what work you did there, why you were fired, and uh, others. Taping? Will deal. What are you taping? I'm doing an interview. An interview? Do you know what they will do to us? I, I thought we... What's up? Leanne, uh, this is a preliminary... You didn't tell her we were taping? What did she think she was coming to New York for? Talk about it, think about it. I had a plan to uh, ease her into it, but I really I don't know how to do that. Ordinary people under extraordinary pressure, Mike. What the hell do you expect? Grace and consistency? Mr. Sandifer say before Congress that he believed nicotine was not addictive. I believe Mr. Sandifer perjured himself because I watched those testimonies very carefully. No, all of us did. I mean, there was this whole line of people, a whole line of CEOs up there all swearing. And part of the reason I'm here is that I felt that their representation clearly misstated, at least within Brown and Williamson's representation, clearly misstated what is common language within the company. We are in the nicotine delivery business. And that's what cigarettes are for. Delivery device for nicotine. A delivery device for nicotine. Put it in your mouth, light it up, and you're going to get your fix. You're going to get your fix. You're saying that Brown and Williamson manipulates and adjusts the nicotine fix, not by artificially adding nicotine, but by enhancing the effect of nicotine through the use of chemical elements such as ammonia. The process is known as impact boosting. While not spiking nicotine, they clearly manipulate it. There's extensive use of this technology known as ammonia chemistry. It allows for the nicotine to be more rapidly absorbed in the lung and therefore affect the brain and central nervous system. The straw that broke the camel's back for me and really put me in trouble with Sandifer. It was a compound called Coumarin. When I came on board at B&W, they had tried to transition from Coumarin to a, a similar flavor that would give the same taste and had been unsuccessful. I wanted it out immediately. I was told that it would affect sales, so I should mind my own business. 
I constructed a memo to Mr. Sandifer indicating I could not in conscience continue with Coumadin in a product that we now knew we had documentation was similar to Coumadin, a lung-specific carcinogen. And you sent the document forward to Sandifer? I sent the document forward to Sandifer. I was told that we would continue to work on a substitute. We weren't going to remove it as it would impact sales and that that was his decision. In other words, you were charging Sandifer and Brown and Williamson with ignoring health considerations consciously? Most certainly. And on March 24th, Thomas Sandifer, CEO of Brown and Williamson, had you fired. And the reason he gave you? Poor communication skills. And you wish you hadn't come forward? You wish you hadn't blown the whistle? Yeah, there are times I wish I hadn't done it. There are times I feel com compelled to do it. If you ask me, would I do it again? Do I think it's worth it? Yeah, I think it's worth it. Jeff Wigand. You can call me uh, Mr. Wigand. You can call me Dr. Wigand. I have a PhD in uh, biochemistry and endocrinology. You can call me Jeff. Anything else you want to call me, you'll have to do so in private. <laughs> um, okay. I find chemistry to be magical. I find it an adventure. An exploration into the building blocks of our physical universe. So how many of you have taken chemistry before? Okay, I've never taught it before, so we, we're gonna be fine. Our first experiment is uh, gonna be measuring the molecular weight of butane. He's on line three. <laughs> Mr. Scruggs, Jeff Wigand. Lord Bergman said I should give you a call. Uh, my co-counsel, Ron Motley, and I have filed a lawsuit against the tobacco industry on behalf of the state of Mississippi to get the state reimbursed Medicaid costs for treating people with smoking-related illness. But if you'd be interested in talking to us, we'd certainly like to talk to you. When should we do this? <laughs> 